right, we're back and ready to do Snowflake B. So we've got our pieces laid out and we're going to need to mark them, again, using our sandpaper board. We're going to mark our light colored block with a dark mechanical pencil. So use the dark color there. We're going to take our background pieces and use the light colored mechanical pencil on those lines. So I've already marked those, so we're ready to sew. All right, and remember my little trick, take a pin and just lift it up off the board at that point. Okay, all right, we're ready to sew. I'm gonna take my little sticker off here and we're going to place our background or our light piece onto our background. And we need this angle to go from the top, our right, our left side to the bottom right point of the block. So this is the angle that we're going for. So again, start from the meat and we're gonna stitch all the way out. So let's take this to the machine. And we're going to make sure we have our center needle position. And we're gonna stitch just to the left of the line, just barely. And it is so subtle. Okay. Go ahead and clip our threads. Lift that out. I'm gonna take that sticker off. We're gonna take it to the iron. We're gonna press here and press this up from here. All right. Give us a good set seam there. Pick up that iron and let the iron do the work for you by pressing that seam. Put the clapper on top. Just for a second, just to kind of lock those threads down. So now what we're gonna do is take our block and much like we were doing in the previous block, we're going to flip it over and we're gonna to check to make sure we're square, okay? And this is really important to do. You might think, oh, this step is not something I need to worry about, but it really is, especially when you get into your six inch blocks. So I really stress that you should uh, double check to make sure if we need to, to trim or just give it a haircut. And I mean a haircut, look at those threads. That's all you're trimming off. Gonna go ahead and flip this over tip this back and we're gonna use the quarter inch guide that's on that seam and we're gonna trim that off. Okay, so now we've got our block to this point and what we need to do is we're now going to grab the next little piece and we're going to sew it to the same corner we just sewed that to, okay? So we're gonna sew from corner to corner, meet to meet on this one. We don't have any points that we're stitching into. So let's go to the machine. And go ahead and trim. And now we're going to press this towards the little piece that we just sewed on. All right, here we go. Let's take this little guy. We've added a little element that we didn't have on the previous block, which is kind of fun to see how just adding pieces can change the look of this block. It's no different than folding your snowflake and getting a variety of different blocks when you fold it. All right, now that we've gone to the press that, we're going to flip it over and you can see on this one where I went a little bit crazy, but guess what, it'll still work. But that's why we do this check, just to make sure that we are trimming that excess off. Okay, now that we know we're square, we're gonna flip this over, tip this little piece back and we're going to trim. Okay, so now that we have that little section done, we're gonna work this one the same way. We're, this one's a little bit longer rectangle piece here that we have. And this one we're going to sew from this meat to the point this direction, going to the bottom right, double check that for me, from here to here. So this is the direction we're going to sew. So again, start sewing here, sew to the point. So let's go to the machine. And again, we're just writing that line, not directly on top, but we're just a little bit off of it for you. Okay, lift this up. I'm gonna peel that sticker off as well. And we're going to press this up from there. Okay, give us a good set. Take the side of the iron, let it do the work for you. Place your clapper on there. Give it a good set for just a second. Doesn't need much time at all. I just love how flat they lay at that point. 
So again, flip this over and we're gonna just double check to make sure that we don't have any overhang. I did pretty good on that one, guys. I don't even need to trim. So what I'm gonna do is flip this over and we're going to tip this back and I'm going to trim. Okay, so now what we're going to do is bring this back to our station here and we have one more little piece here and we're doing the same thing we did on this block, we're gonna do right over here. So I'm gonna peel that little guy off and we're gonna stitch from meat to meat these two points. All right. Okay, and we're going to press that towards that small little block. Let's go here, give a quick set, press that up. And again, the smaller those pieces get, this is more and more important to use your clapper because we need that control on where those are laying. So here we are, we're gonna flip it over, double check the backside. Wasn't so lucky on this one. I'm gonna have to do a little trimming here. So again, keeping it square, we're going to take it from here to here. And all I'm doing is trimming the excess, not trimming the base of that block at all. Okay, tip this up and we're gonna trim that little guy there. Okay, so we've got two pieces done. We only have one more little piece on this block. We're almost there. So this one, we're going to do exactly the same thing we did on the previous block. We're going to take these two pieces and we're going to sew them to the corners like so. These are a lot smaller than our last ones. So again, we should be able to sew these all at once and then take them to the um, pressing station and press it at one time. So I'm gonna set one corner and go to the machine and then I'll grab this next piece, okay? so. Stitching to just the side of the line. We're gonna trim. And then I'm going to grab this next piece, place it on top here, and we're going to stitch. Okay, now we're ready to go to the iron, okay? So here, we're going to press these towards the outside. Give it a good quick set and then use the side of the iron to press one side and then the other. So if you notice, I didn't even lift up my iron at this point. I'm just rocking that back and forth. Once I get my clapper on there, I'm going to just set that, get that nicely locked into place. Our, 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 what we're trying to do is here is not to distort this block, okay? So sometimes when we're sewing pieces onto a square, we can kind of shift. And so sometimes I just give it a little pull here just to keep that as square as possible. Just if things happen to move and I can tell that they did just a smidge when I did my pressing. So you can see here, we've got excess here and I've got a little excess right there that I need to trim off. Not too much, but we're going to trim here and here. I'm gonna rotate my mat this time and come back and look and make sure we're square on those sides. Okay, and we're gonna trim right there. So we've got our block square again. We're gonna tip these back and trim those off just like we've been doing. It's very repetitive, but it's so fun to see all the variety that you get from the same steps, just changing one or two little things as you go. All right, now we have our large square. So what we're going to do is now we need to assemble and make our snowflake. So this one, we're going to make sure that it's going to the center of the block. We're gonna take our little guy here and he's gonna go on the side. And these are all running parallel is what we're looking for with each other. So if you notice this goes up, these are gonna go up as well. So that's what you wanna look for. So if you're going like this, it's not right. We made an airplane. We don't want an airplane. We wanna make sure that they are going with each other to where we have an excess of blue up in the corner. So what you're going to do is take this block, flip it over, and we're gonna stitch right here. Okay. Now we wanna make sure we're doing a quarter inch seam on this. So I'm gonna change that back to our seam allowance. 
we're gonna stitch that all the way down. And now we're gonna go to the iron and we're going to press this to whatever side works for you. I found that I press it towards the large block center here. So we're gonna take this and making sure that's on the top because then that helps control the press. Okay, just set that on top for just a second. All right, now we're gonna take and place this one on here. So all we're gonna do is just flip this over. We don't have any seams that we need to nest or anything like that, which is kind of nice. We can just stitch that together and we know that it's gonna work out. So let's go to the machine. All right. Okay, and now we've sewn that together. We're going to press this up because this has the least amount of bulk to it. So I found pressing that up to this top section worked well for me. And we're going to just set that there. Put the clapper on there for just a second. Locks the heat in there and those seams lay nice and flat. All right. Now the next thing that we're gonna do, as you can see, we have four of them already made. So you're making four of that exact same block that we just did, okay? So those are our four corners that we're going to do. We're going to assemble it just like we did the last one where we're taking our E strip and we're going to sew it here and here, and then we're going to assemble this guy all at the same time. So this one, I'm gonna do this a little different where we're going to sew this one to this one. And then I'm gonna come back and grab this one to this one. They're all being sewn at the same time. So just showing you how to streamline things if you'd like, right? So taking this piece, we're gonna go and to the machine and we're gonna stitch this all the way. And I'm keeping the piece portion of this on the bottom by the feed dogs. Now I'm gonna grab this one and we're gonna go to the machine. Okay. And I'm gonna clip those apart. Now, this one, we're gonna just press these up towards while we're here. So again, showing you just a variety of different ways to put them together, they all get to the same place at the same time, okay? So going to the iron, gonna give a quick set here. Press that up. And then I'm going to set this off to the side and put my clapper on it while I grab this next section. Grab it here. Gonna place this up. Place that on top. But this time I'm gonna grab this one because we still have one more section to sew, right? So we're gonna take this one and place it right sides together, or place them right sides together, but I wanna flip this over when I sew it so that this is on the bottom of the feed dogs. Okay, so let's sew that together, quarter inch seam. And. So ultimately you'll end up with two sections like this before we join that center section in. But just like that, we're ready to press that up. So taking it to the iron, we're going to place it here. I'm gonna grab this guy, open it up. Put the clapper on there for a second if you'd like. Doesn't take long. And now we're going to sew these two pieces together here. So taking it from here to here, we're almost there. That snowflake is coming together and I love the variety. So again, quarter inch seam. Just double check we're lined up here. And again, you can pin this if you feel like you would like that control. Um, I found with the batiks, we don't have as much shifting so we don't need as many pins. Okay, all the way through. And we've got one more seam to press. 
taking it, we want the strip to the top side, that center section, place it here and lift that up. And there you go. One more snowflake. It's so beautiful. And I just love these breathe batiks on how different they all look. So there is block B, also known as snowflake B. We're gonna move on to snowflake C or block C. We'll see you soon.